The Farmington River is a beautiful historic river with a continuing sense of history and preservation. Thousands of years ago, not long after the melting of the last great glacier, ancient hunters and gatherers followed the herds of animals along the fast and winding little river we call the Farmington. Artifacts have been found all along the river and its tributaries. Major Indian trails followed the river and large trading networks developed along them. Ancient trading centers have been discovered and preserved. The arrival of English colonists ushered in an era of trade with the native Indians. Soapstone, fur, and corn were exchanged for iron kettles and axes and cotton cloth. The Europeans traveled along the native trails, and later, when the roads were constructed, they generally followed the Indian trails. Present day Route 44 approximately follows the old Northwest Path. Most of the telltale signs of early industries and mills have long gone, and the river flows freely. However, the Collins Company, built at the site of the old Indian fishing rocks in Collinsville, still stands. In 1826, Samuel Collins, together with his brother and cousin, set up a factory to manufacture sharp-edged tools. Collins Company tools were purchased worldwide. The Collins Company became so important that the first railroad trains came into Collinsville as early as 1850. The old railroad tracks that ran through the towns of the Farmington Valley have been transformed to rails to trails enjoyed by bikers and ramblers alike. Farmington River's particular landscape has played an important role in shaping the course of cultural development along her shores. Early on, steep narrow valleys afforded opportunities for hydropower, while broad lowlands were amenable to agriculture. The influence of the landscape can still be seen in the layout of the highway system and in the distribution of population and commercial centers. Much of this relates back to the character of the underlying bedrock that is resistant to the ravages of weather and erosion. That is the underpinnings of upland and ridgelines of the Farmington Valley. The very high water quality of the lower Farmington River compared to other rivers its size in Connecticut and the excellent water quality of the Salmon Brook are defining characteristics of these watercourses. The headwaters of both the Farmington River and the Salmon Brook are located in largely undeveloped wooded landscapes. Trees on the stream banks provide shade keeping water temperatures low Vegetative buffers protect rivers from non-point source pollution like runoff from roads and lawns.
The outstanding water quality supports diversity of life and habitat and provides for a multitude of recreational opportunities, including boating, swimming, and fishing. The Upper Farmington River watershed provides drinking water to over 600,000 people in Greater Hartford. The exceptional water quality in the Upper Farmington River and in the Salmon Brook contributes substantially to the water quality of the Lower Farmington. The Farmington River is the largest tributary to the Connecticut River and is therefore an important river for migrating fish including American Shad and Atlantic Salmon. The Farmington River Trail is an 18-mile loop that links to the Heritage Trail at points in Farmington and Simsbury. For roughly half its length, the trail runs directly alongside the river. Since most trails are built along abandoned rail corridors and canal towpaths, each passes through a rich cultural landscape of historic buildings, canal locks, iron bridges, stone arches, and other landmarks. There are great places to hike the famous Connecticut Blue Trail system along the Farmington River and Salmon Brook. For example, the Metacoma Trail, which has been designated as New England's National Scenic Trail, is a great way to explore the Tariffville Gorge. If fishing is your thing, you are in good company, historically speaking. Native Americans harvested salmon navigating the Ledge Rock Staircase Falls at the Collinsville factory site. The Indian Hill site in Bloomfield was a Native American fishing area and is now an important archaeological site located on a terrace west of Tariffville Gorge. The Lower Farmington River offers a range of boating activities from flat water to mild moving waters to sections of class 2 and 3 white water for experienced paddlers. There are many public access points along the river. A wild and scenic designation would likely bring federal, technical, and financial resources to help enhance and protect the river while maintaining individual property rights and local control over planning and zoning decisions. Studies have shown that there is an economic benefit to communities that value their rivers and promote them as a recreational tourist destination.